Hey guys, Tech Adventure with the video for you guys. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to properly set up your iPhone 13 mini for the very first time. Now, this video is for beginners or someone that hasn't used iPhone in a while, iOS 15. Things have slightly changed, so we're gonna walk you guys through the basics that you need to know on about activating your phone service on your iPhone 13 mini and then also setting it up for the very first time. So, as you can see here in our hand, it's a pink iPhone uh, 13 mini here. Now, you can get this phone Right now, we'll leave some link in the description section. So let's go ahead and get started with this setup video. So the way to set up your iPhone 13 mini, first thing is you wanna power it on. So the power button is on this side here, the big button on your right-hand side. You're gonna simply press and hold till you see the Apple logo. So that's how you power on the iPhone. So once you see that Apple logo, let go of that button on the right-hand side, and we're gonna wait until we get to the menu to start the process here. In the meantime, there's other thing we can do with simply is make sure that we have the sim card that we want to use so a sim card is a card that allows you to get phone service so if you need to do calling texting of course data you need a sim card to activate your phone you can of course use it on Wi-Fi but most likely you're either going to transfer an existing sim from an old phone or a sim might already be in there now if there's a sim already there because you bought it from a carrier most likely you want to use that new sim because a sim with the newer SIM, you're more likely going to get better service and it's updated SIM to support things like 5G and newer technology. But if you don't have one included or you need to transfer one, it's pretty simple. You're going to have this SIM ejector tool. Now, this SIM ejector tool is a tool that comes part of your package. If you open up your package, you'll notice there is a label and such and then there it's going to be that sim ejector tool now if you don't have this or you're buying a phone maybe pre-owned from someone else or you just simply lost it you can also use a paper clip bend it so that it looks like it can go into this hole where is the sim ejector uh, uh, for the sim tray so you're going to just simply press and hold and once you do that pull that out and then you can go ahead and line up your sim card here you'll notice there's a cut corner you want to make sure that it's flipped like this it's going to look like it's backward but it's not you have that facing forward that cut matches and then you're going to line up that hole again and go ahead and put it back into your phone again this is something you might or might not have to do some phones now also activate through eSIM where you don't really need a SIM card so make sure you contact your carrier to figure out how to do it as you can see we already have service here ready to go but you don't need service to set up the phone it's just for your phone service if you're transferring your phone service over so the first thing you're going to get is the language so you're going to select your language then the region of course wherever you're from and then you're going to hit set up manually and then you want to select the network so we're going to select our demo network here and go ahead and enter the pass word for your Wi-Fi. Now, what you can do is you can also use cellular connection by clicking that, or if you have uh, don't have either of those, you can always connect it to your uh, MacBook or your PC and use Finder or iTunes to activate the device because it will need to get to the internet somehow because it needs to identify with the Apple services or the servers that the phone is actually a good and there's no issues with it you can see the first thing we had a data privacy warning we simply hit continue and then face id so you want to set face id up what is face id it's a way to help you unlock your phone and use other services like apple pay to purchase things on the app store and much more it's basically what used to be the fingerprint it's a way to do a lot of your authentication on your phone you can simply choose to set it up later but if you do set it up right now it's just going to ask you to look directly at the front facing camera and it will take your pretty much your face and just scan it multiple times we'll do it later here and then the next thing you want to do is create a passcode again there's a couple options for a passcode you can do alphanumerical four digit code or simply not choose to use a passcode but you do want a passcode it's really important because nowadays you want to make sure your phone device is pretty much a save. So we're going to go ahead and just use one here. Of course, you don't have to choose one, but we're just simply just choosing to show you how that's done. Now, next part is very important. Now, if you haven't done this, if you want to transfer your information over from either iCloud backup, you want to sign into your iCloud account. If you have a backup on your PC or MacBook, you can always do that. You can directly have your other phone next to it and do a transfer, or you can even move from Android using this 
Android app, which you can follow along and read about it, or simply not choose to transfer any of your data and you can simply start with a clean slate, which you'll select this option here. So which is the option we're going to select. Now the next thing, it's going to be your Apple ID. Now Apple ID isn't really required to use the iPhone, but to download any things or use any of the Apple services, you'll need an Apple ID. It's free to create a new one, or if you have an existing one, you can simply sign into an existing one. And in that case, this is what we can do is sign into an existing one. But for our purposes, we're just going to simply choose not to as it will ask you to enter your email and password. And if you have two-factor on, it will send you either a text or send a message to another device where you have to put that code in. As you can see here, we mentioned that you can simply create a new one for free with every Apple device or simply go ahead and sign into your existing one. If you forgot your passcode or Apple ID, you can always choose that. It'll send you an email and then you can reset your device. Or you can simply set up later in the settings, which you can select here. And then once we do that, terms and conditions, all the legal stuff, you're just going to have to simply hit agree. And then keeping your iPhone up to date is just letting you know that security updates and iOS update will automatically just download unless you turn it off in the settings. iMessage and FaceTime, again, popular feature of the Apple iOS system. So you're going to make sure you hit continue here. Location services, now to use location services like things for maps and other apps, you need to make sure this is turned on. So you'll just hit enable or you can disable. And then Siri, you want to set up Siri, the voice assistant, by hitting continue. It'll ask you to choose a voice and say some commands. We're just going to simply skip that. Screen time is a weekly report that you can choose the phone to send you about how much time you're spending on the screen. You can set limits and do other stuff if it's a child's or uh, children's device that you have the phone on. Or you can simply set it up later iPhone analytics, like with anything, Apple wants to improve their product. They ask you if you want to share analytics with about the phone, if things are happening with the phone. You can simply choose to share or not. We usually just don't say don't share, but it's a personal preference. And then appearance, you can choose dark versus light, like with the, any smartphone nowadays. You have two options. You can also have it set up where it goes dark during sunset and then light during sunrise, which, again, it's another setting you can customize in your setting. Now, Zoom versus standard text. Now, if you need your text to be a little bit bigger for accessibility purposes, you probably want Zoom, but you can stick with standard. The iPhone 12 mini is pretty small, so depending on how big you want the text, you can adjust that. And you can always do that later in the settings. And then finally, you get to welcome to iPhone, which means we are now set up and ready to go. Again, as you notice here, some of the base application might download. These are the default apps. So if you need to download apps, you're going to go to App Store and then hit continue here and then search up the apps that you need to download and go ahead and download those apps now as you mentioned if you didn't sign into your apple id you want to go ahead either sign in or create one as you'll need it to do anything from downloading apps to using all the services of course you can use it on wi-fi here and then the other thing you want to verify is simply that your carrier signal is show up make a call make sure your calls are going make sure your texts are going and of course your data is going by turning off your Wi-Fi here and then make sure you can uh, get to websites and things like that so that way you'll know that it is set up and you're ready to go and start using your iPhone 12 mini so hopefully this video is helpful and if this video is helpful please make sure that like and subscribe button if you guys have any other questions make sure to leave it comment in the comment section see you guys on next time